We're all on this amazing leadership journey, and we are waiting for someone to pass the baton to us. But the question is, are you ready to take it and run with it? I'll be right back. Hey, NWM Tribe, welcome back to our season three. Can you believe it? It's already season three. And today is our very first episode of Learn Together. I'm super excited. For the last past couple of years, we've been talking about a lot of topics on this leadership competencies, but we're going to kind of change the format a little bit. This year, you get to actually participate in deciding what we can talk about if we want to talk about. Um, we're going to featuring various leaders across the nation, some of the district leaders. In fact, three of them are our guests today, and I'm going to be introducing you in a, just a little bit, but we, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you want to learn and what we want to discuss and as we grow and learn together in this leadership journey. And also some new segment to this Learn Together is that in every episode, we're going to end with Crystal Martin's message, right? I know you guys missed her. Yes, I missed her too last year. So we're going to bring her back on our episode and then she's going to give us this amazing nuggets of wisdom, this two cents from Crystal Martin on leadership ministry or journey. So don't go anywhere because you want to hear her at the end of our episode each time on Learn Together. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, passing the baton and also actually receiving the baton. Um, for those of you that are in the generation who uh, that are getting ready to pass the baton, thank you so much for doing what you're doing and getting ready and being actively looking for people whom you can pass your leadership baton. But there is many of us that are looking for that opportunity, but sometimes we just don't know what the first step might be. So in the next couple of minutes, we're going to be listening directly from uh, three district uh, women, female leaders uh, that are just making amazing difference. First person is Pastor Joanne Johnson from the West. And then we have uh, Pastor Mission Tom uh, Thompson from the central area, Ohio. And then uh, Pastor Gina is also coming and joining us as well. And I cannot wait for you to meet her as well. And I'm going to try to say her um full name, if you bear with me, I practice a lot. So it's Gina Escobedo Patato. How do you sound? Is, is it all right? Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and invite our first guest, um, expert in ministry, Pastor Joanne Johnson. Let's welcome her, everybody. Hello. Expert. Hello. That's a little humbling. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are paving the way. I am super thankful for your leadership and voice. Uh, so I have a, this amazing question, and we're going to really take time to get to know. But I wanted you to, first of all, take time and give a little shout out and introduce your, or yourself, and then um, just greet our ladies and friends. Yes, hello. I uh, serve as the president of the Network of Women Ministers in the SoCal Network. SoCal, love you. Uh, it's an incredible honor. I've been in that district my entire time in the Assemblies of God, born and raised in Southern California. And I also currently serve as executive pastor at New Break Church in San Diego. And it's a wonderful church. And I have to say, San Diego, if you can't be in Hawaii, San Diego is a great next option. So super blessed to be there. That's wonderful. Yeah, I actually went to Hawaii for high school, but oh. where you're at sounds really amazing. So <laughs> I'll visit you one of these days. So Pastor uh, Joanne, I have two questions for you, and we're going to be just having a rapid fire kind of question and answer type before our next guest comes up. And the first question that I have for you is, what do you wish you knew before taking on this executive role that you're in? Many of us are um, maybe the uh, step before you, behind you. Uh, so what are some things that you've learned? and what can we do better to get to that point? I would say first, you have to over communicate um, what you do and your perspective, because I know previously when I was serving on staff, I just thought that my leaders knew everything that was happening in my ministry, in my life, in like that they were tracking as closely as I was. And what I realized is that the higher you go up in an organization or even a district, the kind of the less you know about the day-to-day de -day details of what's happening. So over-communicate your successes, over-communicate your growth. Like if you went from five volunteers to 15 volunteers, like let your pastor, your leader know that that kind of thing is happening. So that would be the first thing. And the second thing is you have to own your chair. 
each seat in an organization has a different view and perspective. And when you own and you see and troubleshoot the problems right in front of you, for me, I spent five years as a children's pastor. And when I communicated up about the issues I was seeing and how I saw we could better serve our church or this was an issue or I didn't get the right information I needed, whether it was financial or reporting, it allowed the organization to be better because I had a viewpoint that no one else had. And so I find myself Sometimes now, like I was sending out a communication this week uh, to all of our staff, and I remember being a young person on staff thinking, I wish my main leaders would communicate better or more with me. So those memories remind me that I have to, you know, take that into my leadership now and uh, voice those concerns. If you have concerns about with how the church could be better, how your staff could be better, share that information with your leaders and pastors. Mm, that's good. I, what I'm hearing is also initiate, initiate those kind yeah. of conversation. And I love how you said own your chair. And it doesn't matter on your highest leadership chair, but where you're at, own it yeah. and then show up yeah. and engage and initiate. That's a really, really good point. Uh, my second question to you, Pastor Joanne, is what would you say to a staff pastor that aspires to take on more responsibility at their church or in their network or districts? What would you tell them? So all throughout my ministry, um, I never felt like one specific call, like I'm going to be a blank pastor for the rest of my life, or this is the one lane I want to see myself in. I always saw myself as called to serve an organization at the time of church. I've also served district. And I'm like, I'm called to serve that. And I'm going to use every gift and ability I have to do that. And sometimes we kind of hold our title and our job descriptions like super tight. And we don't allow ourselves to be used in more ways. So if you have a desire to be used in more ways, be open to however God's going to want to do that. When I became the executive pastor about four years ago, um, when on a previous church staff I was a part of, I was actually already pretty much doing the job of the executive pastor. I was overseeing basically all the ministries. I was filling in. I was supporting my lead pastor and helping hire the worship pastor. None of it I have the job description or authority to do. I just started doing it and mm. because it was, was needed. And I happen to have the tenure and experience to be able to help bring in people. So mm. own, you know, just wait patiently, but make sure you pay attention to how can you serve your church right now where you're at with the gifts and abilities. And then God will allow God to open those doors. Wow. Pastor Joanne, thank you so much for that powerful message. What I'm hearing are these three words, show up, own it, and initiate. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for that voice. Pastor Joanne, don't go anywhere because we want to hear the uh, nuggets of wisdom from you as well as we wrap up this interview. So thank you for that two cents that are that we can carry to the next season. Well, the next guest that I have for you is Pastor Michelle Thompson. So we're going to move from California all the way to, no, uh, to the North Central. So Michelle, Pastor Michelle, where are you? Hello, everyone. Hello from Ohio and hello, NWM from Ohio, Ohio for Jesus. <laughs> yes, that's right. And you are also joining us as part of the national team as well this year. So it's going to be incredible. God is just expanding your influence and you're just receiving those batons as they come your way, right? That yeah, you know, <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. I also get the privilege of lead pastoring Rockside Church in Independence. And obviously the network of women ministers is my heart leading and developing women. And so, yeah, just the privilege. Privilege, uh, yeah. to be able to do that. So, yeah. All right, Pastor Michelle, I have a really important two questions for you. I'm going to kick off with the first one. So, what are some things that helped you prepare for a lead pastoral role? Because you uh, took over this um, took over this new role, and you really hadn't had that opportunity. So, kind of walked us away through that. Yeah. Well, really quick, it was a, a season of shifting for me. I was staff pastoring, uh, been there for 12 years, and then just found myself in a season of of shifting and uh, one of the things that I did, uh, there's a small book that I've read multiple times in my life uh, called The Dream Giver by Bruce Wilkinson. And um, in seasons of shifting, I, I've gone back to that. And literally every time it's like radically <laughs> shifted my life. And so there's a quote in that book that um, I want to read to you guys. And it really was what I believe the Lord was asking of me. And the quote is this, and it's from uh, The Dream Giver. It says, are you ready to seem ridiculous? take risks, 
Feel weak and small so that God's power and goodness will be made clear to all. And so that was the season of just being called out. Um, and, and would I be willing to do those things? Um, and would I be willing to be obedient and say yes? And so that really was the first thing was just getting my heart surrendered, um, getting myself out of the way and just saying yes to the call. And then another thing, too, is just um, realizing my identity um, is and has to be only in Jesus Christ. And that's a process that I know we all continue to figure out. It's nothing that we've all we haven't, we haven't like come to get it figured out, but it's a daily thing. And the confidence and the trust has to be in him and him only, not in our talents, not in our gifts, not in our education or our credentials. Although those things are important because we want to be ready. We want to be qualified uh, when the opportunity comes so that we have that. Um, but we can't base it solely on that. So our identity in Christ is huge um, when you're looking at stepping out in any kind of leadership because you're going to be challenged a lot. And if you don't know why you're called and if you don't know who's behind you right. in that calling, it will be a lot of times you'll just want to quit and give up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just really important. And the other thing is to identify growth areas. So immediately once I the Lord and I negotiated and I finally said yes. Um, I had to take a look at what do I need to learn quickly that I don't already know. And so making a list of those things, uh, the weak areas in my own life, figuring out do I staff those um, or, or, you know, or what do I need to do? And then also um, making sure I have a working knowledge of just basic things like how do you run a yearly annual business meeting? I'd sat in them for years. Um, you know, and but but running one is a totally different thing. So just making sure uh, I knew kind of where those weak areas were and then tackling how to learn that. And then the other thing is mentor mentors. Um, talking with different pastors who had pastors pastored before men and women um, asking them, hey, can can I walk with you? Can I ask questions? Um, that's a really, really big deal. And in that even when you seek out a mentor, you need to be a really good mentee. So I would come with questions. I would come prepared like to honor their time, but come, you know, realizing that I needed the advice and I needed the help. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really important too. And then just getting good at asking questions um, about the things that I don't know. And so that would, that would be the few things that have really helped me um, in the season. Wow, those are really, really good. Saying yes, know who you are, and um, you know, go grow your weak areas and find mentors and be a good mentee. That's a really good one. Be a good mentee. So as we are preparing to receive this baton of the next uh, season of leadership in ministry, we know that ministry comes with a lot of unexpected challenges. We don't know what they are, but we know they are coming, right? So what are some key leadership characteristics that can help ministers with longevity and effectiveness? Uh, some common things that we can apply in any ministry context. Yeah. Wow. And that's going to happen. Unexpected challenges. Yeah. right? We just have been through it in the last year and a half with all that COVID has brought. Um, for me, when I look at it, it it's humility. Um, and I know that we can we throw that word around. Um, but really uh, that part where we just really realize that apart from God, we have nothing to offer. And so just making sure that in our heart of hearts that we're walking in that humility and asking um, the Lord for help, but then also realizing there are times in our lives as ministers that we might need help, even counseling, um, you know, having a third party of somebody that can walk with you in some of those challenging times emotionally and mentally. It takes a toll on pastors. And so uh, having a counselor that you can uh, go to monthly or on speed dial, whatever you need, uh, is really, really big. So again, uh, not only in your heart, but then sometimes just asking for help because it's just hard. Uh, Dr. Carolyn Tennant has a quote that I have on my bulletin board, and it says this, you can always go lower. And um, sometimes I, that like when I read it, I just am like, uh, yes, Lord, help me. Help me to walk in humility in some of these times and some of these challenges. And I can always go lower. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that that's we know this, um, but having a devoted prayer life. Um, not just a prayer life, but a devoted one where everything comes out of that time and that space with the Lord. Um, I, pastoring takes so much out of our heart, out of our mind, our soul, 
our, we, there's so much sacrifice that comes all around. And if we're not communing, if we're not connected to the vine, we are not able to give out. And so uh, making sure that devoted time uh, is there and uh, the presence of God. We know this as ministers. We know that that's where it's at. The joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And in his presence is fullness of joy. And so, but sometimes we, we're so busy. We have so many things on our plate that we don't make time. And it really should be the, the other way around where we soak in his presence we, until we're ready and full and then go tackle all the things we have to tackle. And so I wouldn't have been able to get through the last 18 months without, I have space on my carpet in my office here that it's pretty worn out from just being on my face because I need Jesus. And so I think that desperation too um, also, and then just being teachable and flexible. Mm -hmm. That's so basic. Um, but it's just part of, of leadership. And then the last one is just grace, having grace, not only on others uh, that we lead that are on our teams, but then even grace for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as leaders, high capacity leaders, we have lots of expectations on ourselves, and we can be our own worst enemy. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's something that even I've been learning too, is just have more grace on myself. Yeah, thank you so much for Pastor Michelle for those nuggets of wisdom. It's really going back to the basics, you know, uh, but they're not elementary things. Those are God, divine, ordained, you know, uh, uh, just basic ABC that we need to do and then we often forget. So thank you so much for that reminder, Pastor Michelle. And I'm going to invite Pastor Gina. Don't go anywhere just yet, okay? So I'm going to uh, have you back on in a little bit. Pastor Gina Escobedo Fatado. Uh, actually, she's also amazing minister. In fact, why don't you give a shout out to your ladies and men and brothers in your district? Hey, say he, you did an incredible job saying my name, so no, no problems there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I work with women leaders in Southern New England, which includes Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. And right now, one thing that's exciting is that we are credentially more women than we are men. So that that is great. Women, keep at it. Keep coming out and keep, keep signing up because God's going to use all of us. Mm, that's good. Well, brother, yeah. step up. We need you. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Right. <laughs> so I have two questions for you as well. My first one is, what are some things that we must avoid as we prepare mm -hmm. to grow in leadership so we can pass the baton and receive the baton mm -hmm. and run with it well? Yeah. What can we avoid? Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I've when I'm thinking about this, there's so many things that come to mind. But one of the things that I can think of first is that you shouldn't let your past define your future. There are things that in the past might have, I had, may not have been able to do, but God in his mercy allows us to grow and mature experience and time matures us. So just because I wasn't able to do something in the past, if God is allowing me or giving me opportunity to do something, then we shouldn't shy away. We should believe that God is gonna meet us there and enable us to do what he is asking us to do. Mm -hmm. So if your first impulses go, oh, I can't do that. No, no, if God is giving you an opportunity, then I say, get to the edge of the cliff and jump because God is faithful and he will catch you. And then the other thing that comes to mind, I'm kind of going to kind of uh, echo what Michelle said in that you want to stay humble. You know, we hear a lot of the, of, of when we think of leadership, we think about, Oh, it's so hard and it's so much work. Yes, it is hard and so much work, but we also, as leaders, get privileges and we get rights that some other people don't get because we are in leadership. And so we want to be able to stay humble and only use those benefits or those rights when it's absolutely necessary or when it will somehow um, advance the cause. If you ever find yourself thinking, well, I deserve that. I am, after all, the pastor, or I am, after all, the director, or I work so hard, so I should get that. I should have that right. Then I say, watch out and, and, and repent, stop, and remember what Jesus said, that a servant is a leader. And, uh, excuse me, a leader is a servant, more right. first and foremost. So that those are the things that I think about. 
Wow. Stay humble. That's really, yes. really good. Remember Stay that our humble. leadership is a gift from the Lord, right? right? Every leader That's is ordained right. by God. We didn't make ourselves into leaders. In fact, we're That's right. servant exactly. leaders. Yeah, that's so good. So, but not everybody has this opportunity to receive baton, the leadership baton. Yeah. All the all yeah. three of you that we I just talked with, you guys are there. First of all, God ordained you to be there, but you also were willing to receive that baton. But what if, what happens when there's no baton being handed to you? Yeah, you know, in my uh, situation, there was no baton handed to me and, and we had to create a position. So then consequently, the questions then were different. And so what we had to think about what was needed. Well, the first thing that we thought was needed was a lead team. And so although you're so excited and you want to start running with this vision, this, this dream that God has given you, you have to slow it down. And first of all, get a lead team together. Mm -hmm. And then that you have to help the lead team to catch the vision because anything that you, you that you're going to roll out or or introduce from there you want the team to be the one that's executing the vision so that it can be seen as a no this is not just you know Gina's idea or something that Gina wants to happen but there are women in the network or women that we work with that also need this and want this to happen you have to roll out the vision with uh, and understand that there's it's going to be a culture shift mm -hmm. and that it's going to take time. You want to think about who are your champions. Right. You want to think about who are the poss what are the possible challenges that you're going to face. And one thing to remember that th is that there are stages. You all you're going to want to do everything at once, but there are things that you're going to be able to do the first year. There are things that you're going to be able to build on that first year and, and roll out the second year and the third year and so on. And what should be motivating you is the why why you're doing the things that you're doing and the why is going to inform the what and the when and the how and let's see what else could i tell you i think that you have to pick your language carefully uh, so because you're going to have to communicate 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 mm -hmm. and you could answer you could anchor your language in the past and, and that will be helpful, but you also need to anchor your language in the future because that's where you're headed and that's what you want to communicate of, of where you're going. Wow, those are just amazing wisdom. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to call back up all the district leaders uh, that we just talked about with Pastor Joanne, Pastor Michelle, and Pastor Gina. All of you are incredible, and I know that you have this final one-liner of nuggets of wisdom that every one of us can, can just can carry or just plaster on the wall, on the refrigerator, on the computer, whatever. So let's just give them the, this wisdom as we close out um, this episode. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to have to say steward your leadership it, because there are others who came before you. There are those that came, are coming after you. This is your time. Steward your time well and make it count. Yeah. Uh, I guess give freely. Uh, the scripture, the generous person will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So give generously and then allow the Lord to refresh you. So uh, David was anointed king 15 years later he was appointed king mm -hmm. and so i think the best thing you can do is you may already be anointed but you have to wait on him for the appointment nice. wow those are amazing and everybody thank you so much for joining and spending time with us and but don't go away i know crystal martin is anxious to give you another nuggets of wisdom as well until then though follow us on social media at ag women ministers and we'll come back next month with more nuggets of wisdom to share so we can learn together god bless you guys <laughs>Fifteen years ago, my family and I were serving in a restricted access country. During that time, we were having personal and ministry revival. God was doing great works among this least reached people group, while he was also bringing revival to my life and the life of my family. During that season, we were invited back to the States for a minister's conference, and we were super excited. Even though the journey was 40 hours, we get back to the conference, and um, I was excited. I started attending all the breakout sessions and the plenary sessions, but as I began to go to each session, can I tell you, my heart began to drop. 
I had been living in a, in a season of revival where we were seeing miracles on every front. And I felt like this Christian leadership conference was all about leadership. Where was anybody teaching me how to cast out a demon or lay my hands on the sick and see them recover? We were talking about leadership and it actually began to grieve my soul. It was about two weeks later as I went back to my country that I was working in that the Lord began to bring this moment back to my heart. And he said, Crystal, um, you know how the Lord talks to us so personally. Crystal, I need you to grieve where I grieve. And it was almost as if my grieving was getting a little bit off. And he actually brought me to the story of King David and his very first public leadership journey. It was a spiritual journey, but it was also a leadership journey when he killed Goliath. He got his five stones and those five stones represented the leadership journey of his past. He had killed the bear. He had killed the lion and he knew he could kill Goliath. But the Lord began to show me that these five stones that represented David's, David's history of leadership in his next season, when he brought his mighty men together, he did not pass out five stones. What did he do? He gave his mighty men. He, they used swords and chariots and the weapons of the day. And can I tell you, the Lord spoke to me in that moment. He said to me, Crystal, if you want to lead with kings, you're going to have to learn the tools of the kingdom. And in that, I knew that God was challenging me to not only grow as anointed spiritual leader, one that knew how to lay hands on the sick and see them recover as I press into my spiritual anointing, but also as a leader that knows how to sit at an executive table and work among my men and women colleagues and lead together as I close our moments today, our leadership axiom is simple. We need to grow, as my pastor Jim Bradford says, in anointing and in excellence. But always remember King David, he used the tools of his day, but he never trusted them. Let us be leaders who grow in our tools, but never trust them. May God bless you today, and may he give you the wisdom and courage to step into next level leadership.